Okay then my friends, so in this video I just want to take this one step further, this idea of inheritance, and talk about how we can actually override properties and methods. So at the minute, when we create this admin user class over here, it's inheriting all of these properties, well these two properties, and these functions right here, okay? Now what if we had a third property, and this is going to be public, and we'll call it role. And for regular users, this is going to be just member. So we're kind of hard coding that value. It's not something we want to pass into this constructor because we don't want to set that when we create a new user. All users are going to have this role initially to be a member. Now, if we go down here and try to echo this property out, I'm going to say echo and then user one first of all. And we're going to access that property, which is role and then concatenate a BR tag. If we try to output that, it should work. It should say member. So refresh and we can see member and that's absolutely fine. We're creating this new user and it automatically gets that role value. But if we now try to also echo that value out on user three, then it's gonna be the same. So if I say user three and then get the role again, and I'm going to just concatenate a BR tag again in case we do another echo after this. I'm going to save that, refresh, and we also get member. So even though this is an admin, it still has the same role. Now, how would we therefore override this? Because I don't want admin users to have the role of member. So we can do this by just creating a new public version of this variable right here, call it role and set it to something else like admin. So if I was to save this now and refresh, then we can see the role is now admin. So that's all there is to it. If we want to override a property value, we can just redefine it in the class itself. That's all there is to it because by default, it inherits this value right here. So that's properties, but let's do an example with a method. So what I'd like to do is create a new method over here inside the user class. This is gonna be a public method. So public function, and we'll call this message. Now inside this function, all we'll do is return, and then it's gonna, oops, we need to spell that correctly, return. It's gonna return a string, and that string is gonna say this, and then we'll say email sent a new message. So when we call this method, on a particular instance, on a particular user, it's gonna get the email property of that user and embed it in this string to say, whoever sent a new message. Now, if I come down here and I try to do this, I'm gonna say echo now and we'll say user one and then we'll call the message function. So let's concatenate a BR tag to that as well. Let's save this now, test it and refresh and we can see now mario at the netninja.co.uk sent a new message and if we change this to user 2 then we should see luigi did it save it and refresh okay all looking good now if i also do this on the admin user which is user 3 let me just copy that and paste it down here change this to 3 then it's going to have exactly the same functionality because it's automatically going to inherit this message method. So save it, refresh, and we can see right here we get the same output. So what if I want to change the output if an admin sends the message? Well, again, we can just override that function inside this admin user class. So I'm going to grab this and copy it, and I'm going to paste it down here like so. So it must be called the same thing, message, for it to override it. And then all we do is return something else. And what I could do is say this email and then comma, and we could say an admin, comma, sent a new message. So we're saying, okay, well now this email, so get the email of this instance who is an admin, sent a new message. Now, if I save this and try it out, do you think it will work? Well, let's save it and find out. I'll refresh. And no, it says undefined property, email in admin user. So it's saying here that we don't have access to this property. So why is that? Well, that's to do with the access modifier in front of this property over here. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in the very next tutorial.